Hey everybody, it's Cam. Welcome back to the channel. Let's talk some stocks. So in this video, we're going to talk about AMC. Uh, it's Saturday, March 20th, so it closed Friday, um, just below 14 bucks. So we're going to look at how that could possibly impact the move this upcoming week. Um, hope you guys are having a great weekend watching the basketball. Eastern Washington almost pulled off against Kansas. Had a great first half, couldn't make the second. But uh, good game nonetheless. Hope you're, Hopefully your brackets are doing pretty well. Mine are not. But uh, let's jump into AMC. So <clears throat> here's the price action from Friday on the uh, five-minute chart. Um, so sold off first thing in the morning. Just basically hovered around $14 all day. Power hour comes in. Big sell-off. Uh, buyers come in, you know, 1375 pushes this thing back up gets all the way up to 14.1 but then the fi final 10 minutes of the day just massive sell off you know algo raid um, high volume right so the highest volume of the day was actually the last 10 minutes uh, in, on terms of five minutes you know five million shares 4.7 million shares push this thing down buyers try to get it back up can't get over $14 level so all those uh, Call options over 14 bucks and didn't hit their strike price, so they uh, won't be bought this upcoming week. Uh, and then uh, there's interesting looking at this too because I looked at the uh, price on my phone while I was getting ready for our game, and uh, I noticed the volume on the daily for Friday was way more, or not way more, but it was more than, than Thursday. And I was watching the volume in the morning, and it was quite a bit lower. So if you go here, just look on an hourly chart. So. <clears throat> Oh, I can't see because I zoomed in too far. Oh, come on. But, uh, so if we look at the hourly here from, you know, Thursday, the first three hours a day compared to Friday, it's quite a bit less. But if you got the daily, Friday actually had more volume. Um, but you'll see here, if you go back to the five minute, that right after the close, that five minute candle had 40, basically 49 million shares traded uh, after hours right after the close. Uh, so that's obviously very significant. Uh, so I went and looked on Nasdaq.com. Swap over to there, and uh, they actually do have a bunch of like uh, form fours on their SEC filings, which are you know their um, you know executive branch people, people that own stock within the company. Um, we're buying and selling. You know there was you know about a mix of people buying, people selling. Uh, the largest was one of their uh, Vice presidents like transferred uh, a half a million shares to his adult sons who don't longer longer live with him, so it's not technically a sell, but uh, but it looked like it was a wash on the whole. But still, like all those added up together, weren't even close to forty eight million dollars shares. So it looks like this had to be like institutions either uh, getting out or creating a position. So that could be interesting going forward, especially you know because the price didn't get above that fourteen dollar range <clears throat> for those strike prices. But if we go back out now, uh, just to look at, uh, we'll go all the way out to the monthly to start here and just see the the move because we only have you know this this last week here of the month for March, and uh, you see January get the huge huge engulfing bar you know the massive move on the squeeze, February inside month inside that January candle, and then March here is going to be looking like it's going to form another inside candle. Uh, February, uh, you'll see here just the the 50 month moving average is down at 11.88, and uh, not really <clears throat> anywhere close to uh, the other moving average. You know the 200 up here at 17 and a half, but the monthly we're kind of just sitting in the middle right now, month wise. So we'll look to see if uh, we can get some movement higher to take out the high, or otherwise we just consolidate back down to this 50 month moving average at 11.9 essentially. If you go to the weekly here, uh, looking a little bit more bullish obviously with the, the move on the weekly chart. So still we ended the week up um, you know 13 at 13.93 from a uh, 11.16 so another again another considerable move higher. So 13.93 You know, it's like still uh, 25, 26 percent move on the week. <laughs> but uh, so still like incredible momentum going up higher on the weekly. But it looks like we're, you know, we're, we're here outside the active trading range here, the little dots on the Keltner channel. Uh, RSI is 
getting real close to 70, you know, we're at 68. So we could could get a pullback now uh, with us not closing above that $14 range. Um, so, right, so we basically close right at this 50% fib off the uh, the move from January. So the high, the 100% on that is actually where it, it touched pre-market um, in January for the pre-market high. So this, that was the high of that entire move, not just intraday. But if we go down to the daily, we'll draw some... Uh, Look at drawing fibs here, so I think it's. Um, let me. I want to be able to do this to zoom in far enough so you can see it. So if we stay over here, towards the right side uh, a little bit. So if we draw fibs, you can just kind of see an area that shows up. If I don't click, but if I just make this 100% uh, fib and just look at the extensions down. So if we go from <clears throat> the high of the week to the low of the week intraday. So 11.54 to 11.85, essentially. Um, you can't really see it, but you'll see here that uh, I can't really click and move the mouse, but um, the, the the candle on Friday with the, the long whip below, essentially the buyers came in right at the 50%, and the 61.8% FIB is right at about 13.50, where the price we're sitting at in after hours now, Friday, on after hours close. If I move the fib down to the close from Friday at 11:16, uh, there's really nothing sitting there at 13.5. But again, we do have uh, uh, the 61 fib has moved down to 13.2. So where that 50 fib was at prior, you know, using the uh, Monday low, and then if we go <clears throat> all the way to the, to Monday's low from last week, you know, at 8.31. Again, we have that 78 fib coming down to 13.2, and then if we go to the 8.05 um, from the close, you know, 13.717. So I think potentially we could get a pullback on AMC this week to that 13.2 level, at least maybe retest this low from Friday on Monday, especially with the the downward momentum after hours uh, uh, on the stock, especially with that that large volume coming in selling right after the bell so we could pull back into this nine moving average going forward before we move higher but even still right so we've had this pretty explosive move up and it it, it shouldn't be uncommon for this thing to pull back to the the moving average to rest a little bit before buyers can come back in and put and push it back up um, <clears throat> you could somewhat call this an indecision candle here at the high um, on Thursday from uh, Monday's high and then here another red candle low. We did get a little hammer. So there is fighting going on So I think right now we're kind of just sitting in like an indecision no man's land and the uh, the gap for Monday is gonna be pretty important for the direction of the week uh, I think it's probably more likely right now just with the the options expiration from Friday That we do probably go down and at least test the bottom of this this uh, candle from Friday and get down in the 13.2 range uh, at some point next week probably Monday and then uh, look for the buyers to come in and see if that will act as support if we look at volume in that area too I mean I'm going really slow right now sorry about that Let's see if we can get some memory back <clears throat> okay so but if we look at some the volume in that area too right so obviously we, we do have a higher concentration volume in the 13s right a lot of that 13.5 level where we're sitting at after hours right now that's where the the, the highest concentration on the histogram is, but we do we do still have a considerable amount at 13. But once, I shouldn't say once, but if 13 dollars breaks, right, we do have this void in volume all the way back down to about 11 bucks, you know, and and that would constitute this gap fill between Friday and Monday of last week. So downside risk, I think we could see potentially down to 11 bucks. Um, if uh, sellers don't come, I mean, excuse me, if buyers don't come in <coughs> at that $13 level, I mean, if so that would be, you know, a bearish case, bullish case, say buyers come in Monday, um, you know, we're still looking to take out, you know, the, the 1450 area that's acted as resistance this week. That's obviously, obviously got to be the first target. And then we're going to look to go get into this $16 candle, right? The high on this candle. 1650 and then up to 1725 so next target would be 16 up to 17 once that 1450 area breaks 
on uh, momentum. So right, so their movie theaters are uh, essentially all back open. They had put out a PR report that 98% were opened uh, as of yesterday, March 19th. So uh, it's just a matter of whether or not uh, consumers flock back to movie theaters instead of streaming. I know I've seen a lot of different things on like the now streaming services, what their, their numbers are in their projections. Obviously, they are, are high and have been, you know, rightfully so with all the COVID pandemic stuff. But I do believe people um, will value going to movie theaters going forward just for the experience. You know, you can't replace um, that experience in your home. Unless you have a home home theater, which I don't think a lot of people do, but you know the average person doesn't. So I think that they they will come come back uh, strong. You know if they get some big box box office names back, AMC could look to go higher, especially as um, you know more states keep lacking, or I shouldn't say lacking, or uh, letting down their their restrictions. You know for the public, you know uh, capacity numbers and whatnot, so more people come back. And we could eventually get up back up into the sixteen seventeen dollar area. <clears throat> I think you can see that a little bit better here, maybe on the uh, just the weekly again, just because we are sitting at the edge of that active trading range. You know, a pullback here wouldn't be a bad thing, right? So we still have very strong bullish momentum on the weekly, right? Just look how vertical this nine EMA is here. We have the two hundred here at support at eleven bucks. Say the the bearish case does happen, so eleven dollars I think would be a uh, you know, good area to risk off of uh, if the stock does drop this, drop this upcoming week. But uh, I think long term, especially you know in the next couple of weeks, month, the month end, uh, AMC should keep rising. How fast that happens, I can't say. No one can really say. Uh, you know, there's a lot of the video I put out on Thursday about what was happening on Friday. You know, various people had different uh, outlooks. On it, and uh, one guy commented, "I think it's going to close at 14 bucks." You know, these days are over hyped, can be underwhelming, and that's exactly what happened on Friday. Uh, so, no one knows, but the chart will tell us where the stock's going to go along the way. So, um, we'll just have to wait and see what happens Monday morning pre-market, and uh, be prepared in <clears throat> each case whether the the price rises on Monday pre-market or lowers in pre-market. We should have a plan going forward on uh, how we're going to play MC. So that's what I got for you guys in this video. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. If you got something for me, leave it in the comments. I'll get back to you. Uh, if you could drop a like and subscribe if you got something out of the video, that'd be great, and I'll see you in the next one.